It's new knife day, and new knife days are the best days. And today is the Rayot Knives K1. And specifically, this is the plain Jane handle, just regular non-anodized titanium, regular carbon fiber, but look at that sexy beast. This one's all about the blade, and this is the hand-rubbed satin blade. So yeah, it, this knife for me, um, is doing a few things for me. So this is my first ever Rayot knife, and I don't have any uh, of the other knife makers, uh, not knife makers, but knife designers that uh, use Rayot to build their knives, like Pena or uh, Leong Ma or anything like that. I don't have any of those. Um, but because I heard about that Rayot does such nice work, the, you know, the further and further down the rabbit hole I tumble, um, you know, Rayot kind of keeps coming up as just a really, really top-notch knife maker. So I thought I'd just go straight to them and uh, get one. So that's what this dude is, represents to me. Um, but also, uh, in terms of the blade, in terms of the blade shape, um, this is my very first harpoon-style blade. And so at first I wasn't really sure how I felt about that. But after handling it or for the last maybe hour or so, um, this dude is sweet. Like I really kind of do like the aesthetics of it. It's the complexity of this grind up here is super nice. So it's like you have a crown spine and I'm a sucker for a crown spine, like big time, like bad. Um, and then you get the hand rub, um, uh, grind lines there or whatever, just the horizontal lines, which looks great. Look at the the lines there so it's like the line coming off the top of the knife here kind of comes through and it almost like it follows a traditional drop point style right there but then there's this line that comes all the way up here flows right into this comes up and out and just the complexity of integrating the hollow grind on that to these grind lines and then you have that flat there there's another flat right there on the spine and right there. I mean, this, it is a sweet, sweet blade. I like the complexity of it and incredibly, incredibly sharp tip. Um, and also, I don't know if you can see, um, in terms of just, I'm a sharpener and it really, really bugs the shit out of me when knives come from factories with, uh, uneven blade grinds. <clears throat> This one is uh, definitely, definitely, uh, it's not quite perfect. It's a ever so slightly asymmetrical, but it's leaps and bounds um, better than most. So it's really, really nice. And also, the blade steel is RWL34. So my understanding, I'm not super hip on it, but my understanding of RWL34 is that... It, it's some dude's initials. I can't remember what the initials are, RWL. Um, but this blade steel is used by Damasteel. So when you see a knife that's got the Damasteel Damastic, Damascus blade that's super you know, nice and in all these high-end knives out there, RWL 34 is the base, like the, the majority of the steel in that knife uh, in that blade is going to be RWL 34 and then they complement it with another steel. So, but I think that like the higher polish, like the shinier bits of those blades is going to be RWL 34. So, um, I'm looking forward to sharpening and polishing this blade, um, because I think that it might just be exceptional, the edge that I'll be able to get on it. Um, it is a little bit on the thick side. It's, I think it's like, uh, point one six inches thick in blade stock. So it's a little bit on the thicker side. Um, I'm not certain, but on some angles, if you look at it, uh, it doesn't so much look like it right there, but it, I don't know. At the same time, it kind of does look like it has a mild hollow grind. Um, so I'm not certain if it does or not, but, and it's not super thin behind the edge, but, um, I, honestly, I don't give a shit. So, um, but uh, here in the first hour or so of me, wait, well, let's watch this. Let's check out that action, dude. This thing is slick. 
I'm talking super slick. It's really nice. Yoink. So um, I did, I have already, uh, this is version two of this video. I <laughs> just kind of sounded like a rambling dummy in the first one. And I actually took this knife apart or attempted to. I couldn't quite get it all the way apart. I don't know if there's hidden screws underneath these scales or if these tolerances are so exceptionally tight that um, I was afraid that I was gonna jack something up. So um, I did take the pivot out, pop the blade out, clean the bearings, uh, put some 10 weight nano oil on there and put it back in. Um, and it didn't prove the action, but straight out of the box, this was an exceptional action. It wasn't quite as drop shetty as it is right now. So the nano oil did do a little something for it, but uh, I mean, this action is excellent. And overall, the fit and finish on this knife really, really, really does live up to the expectations that I had in my head about Rayot knives. So it, it's kind of a game of, uh, it, so at first, like this knife looks kind of plain Jane, right? Everybody's seen a titanium knife with carbon fiber. So what, right? And it's kind of nice to just have a, you know, not a super wild design or anything like that, right? Um, but there is more subtle complexity in this knife than what I expected from it. So look, watching the videos that people have put out about it and just looking at pictures and all that kind of stuff, um, this knife is just thoroughly, thoroughly well executed. So, you know, we have this lip right here and this lip on, alongside the uh, the... Uh, liner here um, and the gaps are that's it, the gaps are like not existed on this knife like I can feel the lips right there just as it steps up that is the design of the knife but as far as the actual gap in between the carbon fiber and the titanium right there it's like it's there but it I can't feel it it's basically non-existent look right here look at how tight that is Perfect. Everything on the uh, titanium scales, all of this is chamfered on the inside. You can see right there the bevel that they put on there with the chamfering. Everything has been chamfered, knocked down, so it's super smooth. Look right back here at the back spacer where this carbon fiber comes up and meets right here. I mean, just supremely tight. This back spacer itself is actually crowned a little bit. I mean, look at these gaps. You can see lines right there but I can't feel them. There's no, you know, noticeable difference in height or anything like that. It's, it's, it's an amazing. So there's obviously definitely no gaps in here. That is a backspacer. And there's, I mean, there's nothing to speak of as far as gaps. This clip is another thing that I kind of was interested in. It's a milled, uh, titanium clip here but what's interesting to me is this uh, ceramic ball right here i haven't ever had a ceramic ball um, on the end of a po uh, pocket clip and it's amazing how just it goes in and out super easy there's a nice little bit of spring here it's just enough it doesn't need much and i'm i'm kind of wearing some thicker jeans today and it just bloop, bloop, right over the top of them no big deal holds it nice and tight and it's amazing but look at the the finish on that it's all chamfered as well really good finishing and then as it comes up here you can see how it swoops down right here and ties in again right here so you know just like all of these little areas right here even right here on this carbon fiber um i just there's no gaps like i can't i can see where they meet but there's no gaps it's it's incredible so and looking through the lanyard tube which i wish i didn't have to do but uh it's super tight in there too. So this knife is just um, really shows off what Rayot is capable of doing. These are also somewhat crowned. So the carbon fiber is flat, but this, the titanium tapers down, rolls down a little bit. So it's got some contouring to it. It is a big knife. Um, I have big dumb hands, obviously. Um, but look, I've got a little bit extra out there even, and it fills my hand up wonderfully this is why i like big knives because i got big hands and i like a big ass knife that just fills up my hand and i can feel like i can just do whatever the hell i need to do whether it's opening an amazon package or slicing all the cardboard in the world or whatever it doesn't really matter so 
Um, I guess a little bit of size comparison just to show you guys what we've got. Here is a large Sebenza. So I think this is, uh, I think it's 3.8 inches of blade. Um, there's the Sebenza. What are we looking at? PM2, right? So this is a big boy. Uh, I don't know. Nobody cares about size comparisons. It's like, whatever. There's a Benchmade bug out. So, but anyways, um, yeah, this is just kind of uh, an initial impressions. I did take it apart just because I'm a lunatic and I always take knives apart, well, somewhat apart. And I wanted to see how good I could get this amazing action. And it is lights out. The only knife that I have in my collection that is as drop shutty as this one is my Microtech Silicon Elite. This thing is a finger guillotine. And this is the only knife that um, is on the same level. So I'm super impressed. And this is just out of the box. Like, you know, it's not broken in at all. So, um, you know, that oil whip did help a little bit, but the more and more and more that I flick this thing, um, it's only gonna get better. This flipper tab is pretty nice as well. Everything is nicely chamfered around there. It does have some mild jimping, and we do have a little bit of mild jimping right here, but this is mostly uh, inconsequential. Like it's, it, it, there's no traction available there, but back here, there is a little bit of traction there and it's just enough. And honestly, the detent on this knife, it's a little bit on the stiff side, which is what I prefer because you press, 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 bam, that sucker just comes flying out there, man. And uh, every single time. So it's really, really just top notch. I uh, kind of a sucker for this thing. So I don't know if I'll ever buy another Rayot, you know, actual Rayot brand knife. Um, some of their design language is a little bit questionable to me and my tastes. Um, but uh, I do know that they do all kinds of knives for all kinds of people. Um, I'm looking at Pena's and some other stuff like, uh, what's the other one? Oh, Wingman EDC. I kind of, there's a couple of those out there that I like that I think are pretty cool that I believe are made by Rayot. So they do all kinds of stuff for all kinds of people. So it's, it's really cool to kind of get just a sample of their work and their design. And so far I'm really digging it. So I am looking forward to, like I said, sharpening and polishing this edge. I am going to put a polished edge on here. And I also, um, if you're been following along at all. Um, recently got into the game of um, lapping films and I've uh, kind of upped my stone game a little bit and I'm gonna show this dude off again. Look at that edge, ooh wee. So this was um, done not too long ago on my Wicked Edge, but since I have done this one, I was really stubborn about putting off, well, really stubborn about not using lapping films. I thought I could get what I wanted to get with just straps and stones and ceramics and all that stuff. Uh, I was wrong. So lapping films, they're super awesome. Um, I used one set of three micron lapping films in my grit progression. And I now have um, on the way, <laughs> they're going to be here this week. Um, I got some new um, glass platens and some, uh, some more lapping films. So I'm going to use those on this knife and I've also been waiting around to um, polish this knife because I want to see what I can do with Magna Cut. Oh, Magna Cut. So yeah, this is this dude's still rocking the uh, factory edge and obviously this dude is too, but uh, both these dudes are going to be on the uh, on the old wicked edge here getting all shined up here um, very soon. So anyways, it's new knife day. I'm super excited about it. I'm really, really impressed with this Rayot so far. It's like my wife's already annoyed um, with how much I'm flicking this thing because the action is crazy. So lives up to the reputation that I had built up in my head. So, you know, this knife's been out for a little while. It's nothing new, um, but it's new to me and I'm digging it. So um, yeah, I'll see you next time. Have a good night.